I told you that putting the Horn of Fury on Liu Che might cause you to waste a bunch of extra rage that you'd be better off using on a different commander? And what if I told you that this was even more the case if you're running Scipio Prime as primary with Liu Che secondary, and that is like the most common infantry pair that we see in Rise of Kingdoms today. In this video, we're going to have a detailed discussion about rage mechanics in Rise of Kingdoms, and we're going to talk about why the expertise on Liu Che is actually way better than I initially thought it was and not saying a lot because everybody already recognized this expertise as very good but first what's going on guys cheers now before we begin I have to give credit where credit is due the idea for this video came from a youtuber who goes by the name of Wout gaming and that name might sound familiar to you because I recently made a video with him on my channel showing off his free to play infantry account and if you guys missed that video definitely go ahead and check it out he's basically an infantry purist as you can see by the commanders he has here but he reached out to me on discord and said hey omniarch i actually think it's important that a lot of people in the community understand exactly how much value they're getting out of the expertise for liu che because i think a lot of people might be wasting their horn of fury and so in today's video we're going to be going over some of the findings that he had and i also double checked them myself in game just to make sure that everything that he did was accurate and it turns out that it was but there's another youtuber that i also have to give some credit to as well and that is of course wick gaming without his work that he did years ago helping the community figure out how rage actually works I would not be able to explain it in this video without him so I'm gonna link to this video down below as well if you want to watch the full breakdown of how exactly rage works in the game please also go over to Wout Gaming's YouTube channel subscribe to him drop a like on his video and you could of course go ahead and subscribe to Wick Gaming as well in hopes that maybe he will one day return to making videos for Rise of Kingdoms and my last plug is just a subscribe to this channel because about 69% of you guys aren't and I know you keep coming back to the videos but you just don't realize you're not subscribed so click that button so let's jump right in here and talk about why Liu Che is actually getting more rage than you would expect him to in the open field typically if you guys didn't know every single turn you'll get a certain amount of rage from your basic attack and a certain amount of rage from your counter attack if we come into the battle log here you'll see that pretty much every single turn as long as you're hitting a target and that target is hitting you back you're going to be dealing a basic attack and you're going to be dealing a counter attack and what we learned from wick gaming's testing all those years ago is that your basic attack will give you about 86 rage every single time that it occurs and you'll get anywhere from 16 to 17 rage for each counter attack now this does round up or down depending on a lot of different factors in the game just know that the game rounds up or down and sometimes you'll get 16 sometimes you'll get 17 and most of the time that won't really matter right if you're off by one point that typically doesn't make a difference as to whether you cast your active skill or not because if you guys didn't know if a commander has a rage requirement of a thousand for example then of course you're not going to cast the skill until you at least hit a thousand so whether you get a thousand or a thousand and seven or a thousand and thirty eight the turn that you cross the thousand threshold means you will activate your active skill on the following turn that's how this works now we can also learn from wick gaming's testing that you also will get some amount of rage compensation if you are losing one or two different aspects of the battle report in this video we're not really going to talk about rage compensation too much because it's not that relevant I mean I guess it is but it's not something that you can really modify in your favor right like you're not going to be looking to get rage compensation because you get it as a result of your counter attack or attack being lower than your enemy so it's important to understand that rage compensation exists especially if you're on the losing side of a trade but it's not super relevant to what we're going to talk about today and in this final bullet point here you can see that for every turn that you're hitting a target and they're hitting you back you're going to be getting either 103 or 102 rage and again this is because sometimes you're going to get either 16 or 17 rage from your counter attack okay so we can expect Liu Che just by default to get between 102 and 103 rage per turn but that's not where it ends because if you come into his talent tree there's a couple of talents here that are going to cause him to get extra rage first of all we have undying fury that says whenever this commander's troop launches a basic attack it gains nine extra rage okay so we go from 102 up to 111 every single turn sometimes it could be 112 and then we also have a burning blood down here which says you gain six extra rage whenever you are hit 
with a basic attack so this actually will only give you rage if your enemy is hitting you back okay so this isn't really something that you can control right you can't control if an enemy is hitting you or not that's their decision to attack you or run away but if we assume that they are hitting you back then that means you get an extra six rage per turn for 117 or 118 rage per turn and if you look through the rest of these talents and you look through the rest of the skills here on Liu Che you'll see that there's no other way to gain rage that's it those are the only rage engines that Liu Che has and there's another commander in a very similar boat as him and that is Alexander the Great if you look at Alexander the Great there is nothing on his skills that give him extra rage but if you come into his talents you're gonna see that he has the exact same talent trees typically you would get either burning blood or undying fury or realistically you would actually get both in every single scenario and so we can expect the rage regeneration of Alexander the Great to be the same as the rage regeneration of Liu Che if everything else is remaining equal and also assuming that you don't have the horn of fury or a nearby Karak's war drums or like a William buffing you or a Trajan or a Joan of Arc Prime like there's a lot of ways to get extra rage but just on a baseline level the baseline rage regeneration between Alex and Liu Che should be identical there's no other rage engines on these commanders but we do know one thing about the expertise for Liu Che and that is that it has the ability to trigger things like undying fury right so for example if we look at this battle report you'll see that his basic attack Liu Che's basic attack triggered his expertise called above all kings and the extra basic attack triggered undying fury so okay well what we know now is that the expertise for Liu Che does kind of give him more rage than Alexander the Great every single time that his expertise pops he's gonna get nine extra rage but this has a 25 percent chance of occurring and you know nine extra rage isn't that much extra rage and so you would have to get this skill to trigger quite frequently in your skill cycle in order to push that rage to the total rage accumulation over the 1000 mark so unless you get super lucky and you pop your expertise a ton of different times it's unlikely that you would accumulate enough rage from just that bonus talent triggering alone to cast your active skill sooner than you would expect an Alexander the Great to cast their active skill so let's take a look at some data that was pulled by Wout Gaming and here we can see that on the first turn when you're attacking a barbarian typically that first turn is just you basic attacking them and they're not basic attacking you back right because they you're initiating the battle with that hit and so you're actually going to gain a little bit less rage that first turn than you would on every other turn because remember you get about 16 or 17 rage from your counter attacks and you're not going to do a counter attack if they don't attack you first right so hopefully that makes sense but in theory what we would expect if they're hitting you back on every single turn is about 117 or 118 rage depending on the rounding there that's going to show up a lot in this video so just understand that these points might be off by one I don't think there's really a way to guaranteed no on any given turn because the game doesn't tell you your precise rage to any given decimal point but what we'll see here is that if you assume you get 118 rage every single turn after the first one what you would expect from Alexander the Great is for them to accumulate over a thousand rage on turn nine and that means on turn 10 they will cast their active skill now wow gaming shows this in his video but again like I said I wanted to double check all of his work so I did the Alexander the Great testing I hit a barbarian and we see on turn nine at the very bottom here it says Alexander the Great is going to activate Shield of the King which is his active skill and then he actually casts it on turn 10. so we can verify that the data that we have here from his initial testing seems to be accurate and then if we take a look at the results he got from his plain Liu Che you'll see that his expertise the Liu Che expertise triggered four different times in the same nine turns and if the only rage that he was getting from those expertise procs was the nine extra rage from the infantry talent then you would expect him to have over a thousand rage on turn nine which would mean that he casts his active skill on turn 10 just like Alexander the Great and this is what I was saying before is that even with four procs of the expertise which is very that's a lot right it's only a 25 percent chance of occurring even with four procs that's an extra 36 rage from those talents it's still not enough to cast a turn sooner however what Wout Gaming discovered is that his Liu Che actually casted on turn eight which is shocking that's two turns sooner not just one turn but two turns sooner so how could Liu Che have possibly gained enough rage for him to cast two turns sooner if he should in theory have only be getting the bonus rage from the actual talent 
on Liu Che's infantry talent tree. Well, without a Horn of Fury or anybody else nearby boosting his rage, the only way that that would be possible is if every additional basic attack from the proc of his expertise also gave him the base 89 rage that we saw from the wick gaming video and so from his testing if he got the proc on turn one three five and nine well it turns out that the proc on turn nine actually happened after his active skill was cast what do i mean by this well the cast that he got on turn one three and five all gave him an extra 86 rage and so by the time he reached turn seven, he had already broken the 1000 rage requirement, which caused him to cast his active skill on turn eight. And then he still got the proc on turn nine, like he expected, but the bonus rage for this was already working towards his next active skill. So just imagine for a second, if Liu Che's expertise said, whenever this commander's troop launches a basic attack while on the map, it has a 25% chance to gain 86 rage because that's actually what's happening except it's better than that because he's actually dealing a basic attack like he's actually dealing extra damage he's actually giving himself another chance to proc other things like his talents or for example like i talked about in my alexander the great video he also has a chance to proc the second skill on alexander the great this is the 1700 damage factor here so there's a lot of things that this expertise can proc as well but on top of all of that the fact that he's dealing an extra basic attack gives him 86 rage and this is a really big deal because a lot of players use the horn of fury and everyone talks about how good the horn of fury is well this says you have a 30 percent chance to gain 50 rage liu che has a 25 percent chance to gain 86 rage so it's slightly less common it's 25 instead of 30 but it's more rage. You're literally getting more rage from a proc of Liu Che's expertise than you are getting from a proc of the literal horn of fury. So what does this actually mean? Let's just do a little bit of math to calculate how much rage are you getting on a turn where Liu Che is primary and he also has his expertise trigger. Well, you have 86 rage from your basic attack and let's just say you get 16 for your counter attack we'll keep it simple you also get nine rage from undying fury so let's add nine there as well and then when the expertise triggers you're going to get another 86 for another basic attack so you're at 197 now but remember your expertise also gives you another undying fury so we have to add another nine so you're at 206 already now let's assume that your enemy is hitting you back you're going to get six extra rage from that as well so you're at 212 so your rage cap is 220 so you're eight rage shy of your literal cap so let's say you had your horn of fury on your liu che and it also triggered on the same turn that your expertise triggered then the most you're going to get from that horn is eight rage that's it so okay it does something the horn of fury does something if that is the case assuming remember that you're not getting a rage from a nearby joan of arc prime or a william or a trajan or an, a Krox war drums or a, you know an epic joan like there's there's tons of other ways to get rage but let's assume that even if you have none of that the horn's only going to give you eight rage on a turn where it procs on the same turn as liu che's expertise now that's unlikely right it's unlikely so you'll still get a benefit from the horn of fury on all the turns that it triggers and you don't get the expertise for liu che right but also let me ask you this how many people are running liu che primary i ran him primary last kvk and he's fine i ran him with Tarek. you can run him with alexander the great there's plenty of pairings that you can run with liu che primary what's the number one pair people use that's gonna be obviously cpo prime as the primary with liu che as the secondary and this actually changes things this does change the math a little bit and why is that well that's because cpo prime has a different talent build he has the support tree so not only does he get the undying fury from the infantry tree but he also gets the burning blood rage from the support tree because this says whenever you launch a basic attack you gain nine extra rage and so this means a couple of different things first of all every turn you're going to get more base rage right because you have the 86 from your basic attack 16 from your counter attack then you get nine from the infantry tree and you get nine from the support tree for 120 could be 121 depending on the rounding so okay you're gaining 120 rage every single turn but what about turns where Liu Che's expertise goes off when he's the secondary to CPO Prime well he's going to get another 86 rage for the basic attack and he's going to get nine raid from the infantry tree and nine raid from the support tree boom you're at cap already you have already gone over the rage cap for that turn and so if your horn of fury procs on that turn then 
it's actually useless it literally doesn't do anything and again what is the probability of that it's pretty low right having the horn proc in the same turn as the expertise of Liu Che isn't that special but we also have to consider that we have rejuvenate here on the talent tree and this will depending on how many points you have give you between 100 and 150 rage every time you cast an active skill and most players agree at this point that you don't need to have three points in here because 100 rage is enough if you get 150 rage for that turn you're gonna be over raging right because you get 86 from the attack you'll probably get 16 from a counter attack you'll get nine from the infantry tree and you'll get nine from the support tree and if you get 150 well that's 270 that's why are you already over the rage cap so you don't need that so what if you get 100 oh that's actually rage cap perfect so you don't need the third point in rejuvenate ever but what that also means is that you don't need the horn of fury on a turn where rejuvenate procs as well so okay so now we've introduced a whole new a whole new variable right so now if your horn of fury procs on a turn where liu che is secondary to cpo and his expertise goes off it's wasted and it's also wasted if the horn of fury procs on a turn where your primary commander casts their active skill because you're going to overrage anyway and it's also wasted on a turn where your secondary commander launches their active skill because of the support tree again the rejuvenate here this this works for both turns by the way if you guys didn't know if we go into this battle report with cpo and liu che you'll see that on turn eight when i cast cpo's active skill i get 100 rage from rejuvenate and then on turn 10 when when liu che casts his active skill i get another 100 rage so okay so now we've now now there's actually quite a few number of turns where the horn of fury is going to be wasted anytime it procs the same time as Liu Che's expertise and it's going to be wasted every single time a skill goes off okay so all of a sudden we're in this situation where the number of turns that the horn of fury is useful on Liu Che or sorry I should say on CPO primary with Liu Che secondary has been decreased now that's not to say that the horn of fury is never useful on cpo liu che certainly there will be many turns where it procs and nothing else is going on and so you just get that extra 50 rage and that's fine but why would you risk that why would you put the horn of fury in that accessory slot when you could put something else in there that's always going to work for example most players will run a ring of doom obviously i've got mine elsewhere right now i'm probably going to craft a fourth one very soon but but there's other accessories that you could put in that slot as opposed of the horn of fury that might trigger and be beneficial more often right you have the concealed dagger which by the way concealed dagger on liu che is going to pop more often okay if you trigger an expertise proc from liu che you can trigger the concealed dagger as well which is crazy you can actually put more stacks on the target with the concealed dagger if you put it on your liu che that's a great place to put it if you crafted a dagger a long time ago and you don't really know what to do with it liu che is probably your best bet but there's other accessories that work really well on liu che as well for example the greatest glory greatest glory is is pretty good on liu che i would say it's this is probably better if you have a uh, gorgo with liu che right like that then you're really cooking with gas i mean hell every time that you trigger the expertise on liu che you're gonna get your silent trial benefit as well and when that's talented you get 13 rage reduction from your enemy and that's gonna happen pretty often like i don't know i just feel like there might be better options than the horn of fury for cpo prime primary with liu che secondary and i want to make that very clear such as the dagger and greatest glory those are probably your best choices or if you wanted to support the group more than yourself you could throw on Korok's war drums because you're gonna trigger this more often with liu che than any other commander right so i mean you're more likely to give rage to your nearby allies than you i mean that that's that's nice and you'll still have a rage engine here for yourself if it happens to occur on a turn where you actually need the rage so i think this is really something to consider because i do think a lot of players are running cpo with liu che and they probably just put the ring and horn on it because that's what you put on literally everything these days right now well gaming did do some more testing to see what happens if you trigger liu che's expertise one two three or hypothetically four turns in that first skill cycle which would mean that you'd have to trigger it your first four turns which is very unlikely but here we can see a couple of things this was the math that he got from one expertise trigger you see that you cast on turn nine if you get two expertise triggers boom boom you're gonna cast on turn eight which is really nice what I found from double checking this is that this data assumes that your enemy is always hitting you back every single turn except for the first one because remember he tested on a barbarian but I think you guys probably realize that when you're actually fighting in the open field a lot of times I mean if you're playing correctly you're probably not taking a basic attack every single turn 
right like a lot of times you'll run in and you'll be hitting something and when you actually start to get targeted like crazy then you kind of retreat back into the murder ball and the enemy either gets dragged in with you in which case free free lunch and if they run away then you're no longer taking base attack so what I wanted to see was okay well what if we remove that 16 extra rage from the counter attacks from every turn like let's just say you're pounding on somebody and they're not ever hitting you back like you're just you're just getting that free hit well you're going to be regenerating less rage if that is the case so what we know is that you would get 86 rage from your basic attack you would not get the 16 from your counter attack but you would get the nine from the infantry tree and you would get the nine from the support tree so okay you're going to get 104 rage every single turn if you're hitting somebody and they're not hitting you back with the cpo primary Liu Che secondary and so if you look at the data here if you assume the same thing where the expertise for Liu Che triggers on turn two how does that affect the rage total well you don't break a thousand rage till turn nine as opposed to if you are taking counterattacks you break a thousand rage on turn eight so if your enemy is not hitting you back at all you will end up casting your active skill a turn later than if they were hitting you back makes sense you're gaining less rage and that also carries over for the double proc so if you get a, a proc of Liu Che's expertise on turn one and six how does that change on turn one and six if you're only getting your base rage of 104 and you'll see that you don't break a thousand until turn eight whereas before you broke a thousand on turn seven so it, again if you're not dealing the counter attacks then you're going to cast your active skill a turn later than you might expect if you were but then we have to ask ourselves in this scenario if your enemy is not hitting you back and therefore you're gaining less rage which I think is pretty common I think a lot of times you'll be hitting somebody and they're not hitting you back yet because they don't realize that they're getting hit or they're running away or something like that would the horn of fury actually do anything here well like I said earlier it's not going to do that much if it procs on a turn where you know you have the expertise go off yes it will do something it'll give you 12 rage but let's assume that it that it occurs on a turn where you know where you're not procking the active skill because most turns you won't be procking the active skill in fact 75 percent of your turns you won't be procking it well in the first example if it procs only once then you'd get 50 extra rage which would mean on turn eight whether it procs on you know any of these turns at all it doesn't really matter by the time you get to turn eight you would have 50 extra rage so that would be boom still not a thousand so if it only procs once it's not going to push this over a thousand which means that you're not going to get any benefit from it anyway same thing in this example here if it procs on you know pretty much any one of these turns you can add 50 to this and you're going to get 986 it's not going to do anything there so you would actually have to get the horn to proc twice in a skill cycle for it to give you 100 total rage in which case you could add another 50 here and boom now you're over a thousand so okay if you have the horn of fury and it procs twice and it has to proc on turns where you're not getting this benefit right because you know assuming that we instead we add 12 here instead of 50 you're at 998 you're still not gonna you're not gonna go over right so it would have to occur on the turns where your expertise is not occurring um and it would have to occur twice now is it possible for it to to trigger twi twice in a skill cycle absolutely right it has a 30 percent chance of occurring so that's great right like that's almost one in every three turns so in a eight turn cycle you could expect it to go off twice which is good as long as it's not on this turn then you should be fine and of course we can expect the same thing over here except now you're working with one fewer turn so the probability of a casting or or triggering twice in this period it's a little bit lower because you just have one extra chance for it to happen so okay enough of looking at the spreadsheet and doing the math I think what we have discovered here and and again I'm going to give credit to wow gaming for this and I mean it's it's intuitive right dealing basic attacks is what gives you extra rage but I just never really thought to test for that right like it I, I don't know I mean it just it's a good expertise you should get it right that's the advice that I've always had is a five 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 one Liu Che usable absolutely but is the expertise worth getting I always think it's I always think it's been worth getting so even without knowing this information I've typically recommended people to get this and so I just never tested to see if it gave you extra rage because like because you're gonna have it anyway right so again shout out to Wout Gaming for kind of doing the testing here and reaching out to me on discord and saying hey I'm New York I want you to share this or can you share this or do you think you should share this and uh, it does seem to be the case that he was right here so in conclusion is the horn useless on CPO and Liu Che no it's not useless but the conditions for which it will reduce the number of turns until your next active skill for this pairing is more strict than with other pairings 
and so let's say you only have one horn or let's say you have two horns but you're running three or four marches well you probably should put those horns somewhere else right i mean again unless you have a bunch of horns just chilling then sure put it on the chat i mean whatever it's fine but for me uh i only have three and um it's just Liuche is not going to be one that gets it because I just feel like it's going to be used in other places and in that place I can use my dagger which is great I've got to use for the dagger again which you know again you're going to get more procs of this with Liuche anyway because of the expertise so that's freaking awesome and just to further the point here a little bit you are going to be getting rage from nearby Joan of Arcs you are going to be getting rage from nearby Williams on the open field you are going to be getting rage from nearby Trajans if you have whales that actually run Trajan still you are going to be getting nearby rage from Karak's war drums occasionally and is anyone running a Guan Yu in the open field probably if you're going to be hitting those targets that are silenced you're going to be getting more rage from CPO's expertise anyway and then on top of all of that with the new rare inscriptions you have inscriptions such as crazed which says whenever the wielder's troop deals direct damage it gains 35 rage with a two second cooldown so that's yet another way that you could be getting rage if you actually have this inscription so in a world where there's tons of rage to go around I just don't think that a horn of fury is the best thing that you can put on your CPO Liu Che if you have a limited number of horns and even just Liu Che in general I'm starting to wonder like maybe you just don't run a horn on Liu Che at all even if you're not running with CPO sure it's a, you know a little bit more risky but I don't know you guys can let me know in the comments section below and I would love to hear from you and your thoughts and opinions on this and also I'd love to know if we're wrong about this right like if someone is watching who's a, a genius at math and they and they're like Omniarch wow gaming you guys missed something you missed this one obvious thing then let me know in the comment section below obviously it's important to to know these things and and this game is very complicated especially the rage system and how it works so if there is something that we missed which is totally possible please let me know in the comment section below but also let me know what you think like if this is true which I suspect to be the case then are you going to be running your horn of fury on your Scipio Liu J I would love to hear from you down below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel it kind of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so the rise of Kings players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel while you're down there and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.